Hello friends. So today I'm doing something. Um, I wanted to paint these cherries, actual cherries, not cherry blossoms, which I've painted several times. And this is the thing. Um, I accidentally drew it on my hot press paper, which I do not work on normally. And so I'm not sure how this is gonna turn out. You know me, I'm spraying my paints, by the way, to activate them. Um, I do everything pretty spontaneous. So we're just gonna see how this plays out. And as I always say, it's either gonna be a disaster or it's gonna be wonderful. Um, let's uh, see how it goes. Today I'm using, as every day, my My Lang paints. I love Winsor Newton, and if you can afford to paint with Winsor Newton every day, by all means do that. But I will say I am a complete fan of these My Lang paints. Look at all these colors. And they are so creamy and vibrant, and you get all these colors. You don't have to mix. As a beginner, that can be overwhelming. Or if you're a lazy painter like me, and you just don't want to mix every day, Lots of browns and greens. Their purples are yummy. They're just, they're yummy. Um, so I really recommend that, that uh, palette and I paint on it every day. I am also going to be, I don't know if you can see my drawing here and uh, I will have this available if you would like. Let me grab a couple brushes. I'm gonna have here my, um, I've been using the Zen Art Round brush. For a beginner, I really think the Princeton or Degato brushes are a little bit better. They're a little snappier, and those are easier for a um, beginner to work with. I'm going to maybe use this 12 Round from Zen Art. I really like this company. It's women-owned. She was a mommy, and that means a lot to me. Um, so last year, I did buy this whole set. Let me show you. I show this a lot, but it came in this bamboo wrap which I don't have right in front of me, but uh, you got a whole set. Uh, they are rather soft. I'm also gonna have here my six long round Princeton, my Velvet Touch, my favorite. It's short, it feels nice, and it's got a little bit thinner, longer point on it. So I have those two here, let me move that. I'm just gonna set those in my palette. And the paper I'm working on is my Meet and Art. Love the Artisto pads. If you have those, keep those. This just happens to be what I grabbed. Um, here is what I'm using. Oh, not rough, hold on. I normally use it. I have some people say, love the Artisto, but I want 100% cotton. I will tell you, to be honest, I think, I can't say enough. I rave about the Artisto pads. I have the large ones and the One's in a spiral bound, but there. this is a cold press, 100% cotton. I just happened to grab the hot press, which is gonna be a lot smoother. Um, so we'll see how it goes, because I'm used to working on the cold press, which has a little more texture. All right, the greens I'll be using are going to be, I like to mix, and you'll find your own green go-tos. I think we all kind of do that. It's part of your unique style. Mine is mixing a sap green and an olive green, so that's just what I use. I actually love this limey green that is in the My Lang palette, so I'll probably add that in a bit. And then I'll use some of the browns. I mean, you have so many different choices here in the browns, so I'll use a version of all of those. You know, use what you're called to. I did make a little swatch of the different reds in my My Lang palette. So there's a deep red here and a more pinky red, some oranges and cad yellows and oranges. I'll uh, play with those. And last thing is make sure you've got your clean wash water and your rinse water. Really important in watercolors. And this is just my little meat and ceramic uh, wells. Love them. All right. Whew, I gotta take a breath. That was a lot, you guys. All right, let's get started. So again, I'm gonna paint on this. I hope this comes out okay, because I don't use uh, hot press paper. And you know what, let me grab, I just have tissue here, that's fine. 
what I'm going to start with, and always anchor your hand, the side of your palm on your paper. For me, I see people paint like this. I can't do that. My hand's not steady enough. So I tend to anchor the side of my hand. And I typically hold about a quarter of the way up. You can hold closer for more detail. I don't do that too often. I hold about right here. And I typically will, um, if I'm doing flowers and things or leaves, I will point the end of my brush in the direction I wanna go. With that being said, let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna mix a little brown here. And we always start, I always start with my uh, lighter values first and then add in. If you're working wet and wet, which I'm kind of doing today, you have to work kind of fast, otherwise it dries before you get back there. So I like to have a lot of my colors in there before I get started. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and start painting in some of these branches, just using the tip of my brush. So normally for the tip of your brush, you'd hold your brush up and down, so you're just activating the tip, not the belly. The more slanted you are, you're gonna bring in the fatter, wider belly part. So I'm just going to tip of my brush, go down. And the branches I see, I'm gonna use a little Van Dyke Brown too, um, tend to have some little bumps and knob type things in them, kind of interesting. So I've got little turns and there's like a little knobby thing right here. So I kind of wet this, but this paper, like I said, it does dry really quickly. And that's kind of a challenge for me because I do like working wet and wet. So we'll see how this goes, guys. I might add a little um, green into those branches. I think that could be a little interesting. A little of my olive green. Just using the tip of my brush. And I am using, um, or I'm sorry, not using, I'm leaving a lot of little white spaces here in there. I don't know if you can see that. So I am doing that just for some interest. I made the top of the, the branch here a little bit lighter, thinking maybe the sun is hitting it. Now let's go in and do a couple leaves. So I'm gonna pick up my olive and sap green mixed together. You know, use whatever you want. I have about 50-50 in here of pigment and paint. And then when I pick up and load my brush, I'm just tapping off to get rid of any excess. And Let's go in, point, press for that leaf. There we go. And point, press. There we go. I'm gonna add in I feel like I wanna add in, I always incorporate a little bit of the color of the flower, or in this case, the um, cherries. So it's got that red. I just think it makes for a nice coherency between the flowers and the, um, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of my Payne's Gray here. Let me grab another, oops. She doesn't sell these, but she made these for me because I order so much from her. And they've really been handy. A little bit of Payne's Gray just to darken that a tad. So see already this is a little bit of a challenge for me because I'm not used to working with this hot pressed paper and it's drying rather quickly. So I really have to kind of work faster then I might even like, I tend to work fast. It's harder to teach sometimes because I'm trying to slow down for you guys and explain things. Let me grab, I'm gonna put a little bit of that olive green. I may order some more of these. I actually really like that you can kind of hold them in your hand. 
I think that's kind of cool. And let's do another one here. Just kind of twisting my brush, making some interesting little shapes. Here's another one here using the side of my brush. So I push and open up the belly of my brush and look how pretty that is. Just twisting and playing. There we go. I think that's really fun. Here's some little tiny leaves. I did a tutorial the other day, and these are just little dabs. And I showed some different ways to paint leaves. So hopefully you saw that. I think it's kind of fun. Um, let's see, let's start with some of our reds. I'm dying to get in there for some of those. So I wanna dig in there. Actually going to use the tip of my brush and just kind of wiggle around. Just wiggling my brush because I wanted to get like an organic feel there. There we go. Just kind of dabbing it here and there. I love these little tiny baby pieces that kind of come out. Okay, let's go on to the cherries. I'm gonna wash and rinse my brush. Let me just show you, oh, how funny I used the wrong side. So wash, rinse, and when I scrape it off, it's nice and clean and clear, ready to go into my next color. Because if I went into my red for the cherries right now, it would have green in there. And because watercolors are so transparent, that's kind of not so fun. It'll end up kind of muddying your color. So I have four of these little trays. Let's add in. That is a really pink pink. I think that is the Myling Rose Red. And then my other favorite red is kind of a mixture of these, a little bit deeper. And I wanna mix all of them kind of together. I might even add some cad yellow and orange in there. So I'm going to start with 50-50 and then I scrape my brush off and let's just paint a little cherry here. I'm gonna use my lightest value first because we can always go back and add in darker values, right? There we go. While that's wet, now I have to do this quick because of this hot press paper, I'm gonna go in and let's just add a tiny, tiny bit of brown, maybe with some, let me pick up my other little Thing there and just touch in a tad at the bottom just to kind of give it a little bit of a shadow effect. And I left whites here so that we could have that feeling of around and the light coming in and touching the top of those. So I don't wanna to do too much with those. Now this cherry in the background, I'm really gonna do a light, light value. So probably 80% water, 20% um, pigment. And if you're not sure of the value, do a little practice. I always cut up these papers. And this cherry in the back, I'm going to do very light wash there. So it recedes into the background. As these dry, I'll go in and uh, darken them a bit. There we go. I'm actually gonna do this little leaf right here because I do want it to kind of blend. I love when everything kind of washes together. That's the beauty of watercolors to me. 
So it's side of my brush, wiggle, wiggle, side of my brush. There we go. And I made that a little light, uh -oh, lighter in value intentionally. And then let's do, actually that's kind of like a gold. So let's just mix that. Kind of like a green gold, the little stem. There we go. And I love that it mixes with the cherry. Now I'm gonna do a couple bright cherries. So as that's drying, I wash and rinse my brush, get all of that green out or gold. And let's go in, let's see, let's use this color with a little darker value, but I'm still tapping off my brush to get that excess water. And look at that. Woo, I love that. Look at how, ooh, guys, sometimes I, I get so excited when I do something I like. I'm like, yes, that was exactly what I wanted. And makes me feel good, because sometimes I do these and I think, oh boy, I hope I don't bomb, and it's like, oh my gosh, she doesn't know what she's doing. So I'm just kidding, I don't worry about that a whole lot, guys. Um, I, not because I think I'm so good, but just because I used to do commissions for years and those were so stressful sometimes. Now I just paint and I have fun and I feel like if you're enjoying it and you're loving it, that's what matters. Okay, let's go on. And, and I feel like when I look at paintings, I can tell if someone did it and was enjoying it and it's free and flowing and not overworked as compared to if um, somebody was just, oh God, oh no, you know, and trying to get it really perfect. I can always tell that. That's just kind of my thing. I'm gonna add a tiny bit of yellow just because I think it's so pretty in cherries. Look at that. Let's do this one in the background here. Add in a tiny bit of that red, but every time I pick up paint, I tap it off, okay? Because you don't want your uh, belly of your brush just full. Now that was a little too much. So I'm going to pick a little bit of that up. So let's just dab our brush so we have a thirsty brush and pick some of that up. That's why I don't really worry if I make a mistake or something. It's like, you know, just make it part of your picture or pick it up. There we go. Let's get some more of that yellow and tap that in there. I love when cherries have a little yellow on them. I think that's so pretty. Again, that's a little bit too much. So I'm going to pick some of that up. There we go. And let's do this one right here. How about we do that one in a little bit pinker color? There we go. It's kind of fun. And now I'll create the little stems. Let's put a little bit of green in there. Because I want to create the stems when the cherries are still wet. So you get that beautiful blend. Let's do that. There we go. Create that little cherry. So for the cherry that's behind, I'm going to, just like these, make a very light value, meaning I have maybe 80% water, 20% pigment. So see that value difference? That's really important it pushes it into the background. And once these dry a little, we can go over and glaze. Here's a couple more leaves. Let's play with those. Pick up my paint. These little palettes really are, I don't even know, I don't think she even sells these. Using the tip of my brush and pushing in. And creating this fun, organic little leaf. There's a dab. Here's one here. Just little wigglies. 
There we go. That's kind of a funky little leaf, isn't it? Let's add a tiny bit of blue to that. If you don't like those uh, puddles, you can just pick them up. Let me grab a tiny bit more blue, maybe even some brown. Like that. Some more brown. Kind of fun, just play. Might even want to, maybe I want to pick up some of that. So just a thirsty brush and pick it up. And now I'll put it back because I really just wanted to show you that. Here's a br another leaf here. I don't know if you can see that. It's in the background. So I'm going to use a very light value. There we go. So now that pushes it. Let me hold that up in case you can't see that. It just pushed this leaf back behind this one because it's so much lighter in value. And I'm gonna do the same with these little tiny buds. They're a little bit lighter. Let's pick up a tiny bit of brown. There we go. And I'll use gold in the bottom here to look like kind of the bottom of the branch. There we go. Just adding in some dark shading. Don't really like that hard line, so I'll go up against it with a little bit of a damp brush. And some more stems. There we go. And I quite like this. I think this is really nice. I might add a very light value, meaning 80% water, 20% paint, and just create a leaf here in the background. There we go. Looking like it's kind of tucked in the back there. And then I'm going to go in to these and deepen that with one more layer of paint. So let's grab my darker paint here. Now this is probably 80% pigment, 20% water, but I'm still tapping off so my brush isn't full. And I'm going to go in and just put some color into those. Look how beautiful. And when I, when I, somebody one time said, you always say beautiful. That's really up to us to decide. You know, you guys, I think all watercolor is beautiful. This isn't something like, oh, I think I'm so great. God knows some of my things I make and I'm like, oh Lordy, what did I do? I think all watercolors are absolutely beautiful. You could make a mess and just the way the paints flow together and the colors and that beautiful transparency. I love all watercolors. So I think they're all beautiful. That this isn't just a, oh, look at me because I certainly know I'm not the best out there. Um, so when I say that to you, no, I say that completely with authenticity because I just love watercolors. That's why that's basically all I've painted with my entire life. I ended up darkening these a bit. <clears throat> uh oh. So I don't want to do too much more here. I feel like that's enough. You could certainly go in and add a little detail. Oh, and this was hot press. So I'm kind of proud of myself for painting on hot press. Um, I, it's just not my normal thing, guys, and it definitely behaves differently, dries quicker. It's just different. So 
I hope you will give this a try. You could elaborate on this. You could add more yellows and golds in there. I would go for like a cad yellow, which I think is really pretty. And now see, here I go. Hopefully I don't mess it up because I'm pretty happy with this right now. And add in some yellows, let it kind of mix with that red. That is really pretty. I love when cherries kind of turn orangey red. The last thing I might want to do here is I'm going to pick up a little bit more darker value of my green. So 80 pigment, 20 water, still tapping off. And I think I might go in and just darken a few of these because I want them to show up. Yeah, see, I like that. I am a huge fan of uh, using values. I think that's such an easy technique that you can really make a difference in your painting. So something like that. just to bring a few of these out in front. Yeah, I, I kind of like that. Just to give some interest and then boy, that really pops those lighter value leaves back and it draws you in. My eye is coming into this bottom cherry. It's going up here. It's going here and here. Now this line draws you back in and pulls you back into the painting again. So I love that composition of these leaves all kind of draw you in. This one's kind of cradling, holding the cherries. They all pull you in towards this focus point, which is those beautiful cherries. And this is lighter, it's pointing outwards, but it's lighter. So it still almost doesn't take away, It not almost, it doesn't take away from those beautiful cherries. So I'm going to sign this, let me find my pen. D. Walker, cherries, two, 24. So there you have it, guys. I hope that was fun for you. I love joining you, painting, trying things out. Um, I think for my next recipe page, I may do some cherries. Look how pretty that would be. And you know, you could just go on your way right now if you're happy. But now that I just picked that up, guess what I saw? Oh! Surprise, surprise, there's that gold. Should we play with that a little? Some of you are probably like, oh no, there she goes again. She's got the gold out. I know, I definitely have a problem, guys, I get it. But I just can't stand not to, right? So just wiggling my brush. Oh, so pretty. Adding a little bit of bling to those cherries. Oh my gosh. If I could paint myself in this, I probably would, you guys. I know, that's weird. But I just, I love it. Ooh, how fun is that? All right, I'm stepping away. Put the metallics away, right? All right, there you go, guys. Thanks for being with me here. You guys make this such a fun place. I've been on here almost exactly a year now, and I get so excited to wake up and see what you guys are doing, and it makes my day to hear your loving watercolors and giving things a try. And there you go. Somebody had requested these cherries, by the way. I'm sorry, I don't remember who that was, but there you go. All right, everybody, have fun, happy painting. Paint with love and joy because it shows in your paintings. All right.
Take care. Happy painting.